Hi everyone, I'm Jack, a radiology trainee in London. To become a radiology consultant in the UK, you first need to pass the FRCR exam. This exam comprises three parts, and today I'll be telling you how to pass the part one FRCR. First, I'll explain what the exam involves, and then I'll talk through how to pass the two papers in the exam, physics and anatomy. I'll talk about which resources I used and the strategy I used to prepare for the exams. I've put more information in the description and on my website, these do include affiliate links, so I will earn a small commission if you purchase through them, and that goes to help me run the channel. As a disclaimer, I'm not being sponsored by anyone for this video. Timestamps are up above, so just skip to the part you want to watch. The FRCR Part 1 is an online exam comprising two parts, physics and anatomy. These are usually held in a test centre on a computer and are typically on two separate days. The physics exam lasts two hours and consists of 40 questions. Each physics question names the topic of the question and gives you five true-false questions. So your total maximum score would be 200 points. There's more of a breakdown in the exam guidance. I'll put a link to that in the description. Essentially, it tells you which topics come up and how many questions are allocated to each topic. So that's quite useful to look at. The anatomy paper lasts 90 minutes and consists of 100 questions. The format of each question is essentially a radiological image, which can be from almost any study, CT, MRI, fluoroscopy, and more. On the image, there'll usually be an arrow or several arrows depicting an anatomical structure that you have to name. Bear in mind, however, that sometimes they ask you a question about the structure rather than what it is. In this exam, you're only asked about normal anatomy or normal anatomical variants. You won't be asked about any pathology. Again, check out the exam guidance that I link below because that'll give you more detail about the exam. Physics is a subject new to most doctors. The key revision strategy is to focus on learning the concepts first before you attempt any questions. There are two main textbooks that people tend to use. The first one is the FRCR Physics Notes from Radiology Cafe. These are available completely free on the Radiology Cafe website, link below. Or if you like having a physical textbook, you can buy it on Amazon. This was my main starting resource, and I liked that it was a very good summary of pretty much all of the relevant areas. Bear in mind, it doesn't give much depth, so you might want to start your revision with this book and then use other resources to delve a bit deeper into each topic. The other textbook people use is FAR's Physics for Medical Imaging. Again, I've put a link down below. This textbook is much more detailed and is certainly enough for the exam. There probably is more detail than you need to know for the exam. However, I thought it explained things more thoroughly than in the Radiology Cafe book. A lot of the more senior trainees swear by FAR's and recommend it as pretty much the only resource. There are also rumours that a lot of the physics questions are based on FAR's. Another Another thing to note is that the current edition is a little out of date, which is particularly important for radiation protection regulations like IRMA and IRR, but otherwise I thought it was a good in-depth resource that I dipped into rather than reading the whole thing. Some other resources I found helpful included the RITI modules that are available online for free if you're an NHS staff member. These are online modules that cover all parts of radiology and its subspecialties, uh, however the physics modules are quite good for breaking everything down into bite-sized chunks. I thought these gave a good explanation for the physics concepts, and I used these to gain a bit more detailed information about certain areas. Another resource some of my colleagues have recommended is MRI Made Easy. Uh, there's a link to a free online copy in the description. It's essentially a short illustrated guide explaining basic MRI principles. It uses a lot of everyday analogies, so it's quite fun. I personally didn't use it very much, but some people found it quite helpful. It's then time to start practicing physics questions. I've put a link in the description to some free questions from the Royal College of Radiologists, and also some I found for FRCR Academy, who are not sponsoring this video. Those are a good place to start for free questions. However, the main practice questions that I used were from MCQs for the first FRCR. This book was recommended to me by a more senior trainee, and I have to say I really liked it. I thought the topics were really relevant for the exam, and I'd probably recommend this book most. For me, it's the only practice question book I used for the exam. Again, bear in mind the sections on IRMA and IRR are not completely up to date, but the other questions are good, and they're also in the exam form. Format. For courses, the main one that gets recommended is the Mersey Physics course. I've put a link to that in the description. I didn't attend this course myself because they weren't running for my exam sitting, but all the trainees I've spoken to have rated it extremely highly. I believe it's taught by a former physics examiner, and if you're a trainee, you can claim back the cost of the course on your study budget. One of the courses I did attend is the Peninsula FRCR Part 1 course, which is an online course over two days separated by a few weeks, run by the Peninsula 
Radiology Academy. It's basically a mock anatomy and physics exam, which quite closely simulate the format of the exam itself. I thought the topics included were good, and they gave a very good explanation of the answers. So here are some top tips for the physics exam. Firstly, read the question very carefully, because they're a bit notorious for including double negatives and strange wording for questions. These are pretty much designed to catch you out. My other tip is to use the pen and paper provided to draw out things. And that's because some of the answers can actually be a bit counterintuitive until you draw them out. Um, the particular situations are when you look at target to detector distances or target to object distances in x-rays. Thirdly, whenever they talk about changing one parameter, you have to assume that the other parameters are kept completely the same, unless they otherwise specify. And finally, it's a true-false exam, so make sure you answer every question as there's no negative marking. There are also, unfortunately, a few things that you just need to memorize, such as the materials of different parts of the x-ray machine. I've put a list of some of these on my website site, uh, link in the description. Now let's move on to the anatomy paper. For the anatomy paper, I followed a different strategy, which is to do as many anatomy questions as you can, and then to read up on the answers you got wrong. This is probably a more familiar strategy for most of you. So for this, you'll need good anatomy mock questions. Personally, I recommend the Radiology Cafe mock anatomy exams. They essentially comprise 18 mock exams, each with 100 questions, and they're completely free. Again, I'm not sponsored by them, but this is the main source of mock anatomy questions that I used for my revision. There are some other free resources, and I've put links to those in the description as well. Aside from anatomy, Anatomy questions, you also need a good anatomy textbook. Bear in mind that many of these can be borrowed from your local medical library or from the BMA library if you're a member, so you don't actually need to buy them. A good imaging anatomy atlas is Weir and Abraham's imaging atlas of human anatomy, link in the description. So this atlas will be a bit different to what you've used before because it focuses on imaging anatomy, uh, which is the appearance of anatomical structures on medical imaging. The difficult part about the anatomy paper is that it only tests imaging anatomy, so you have to look at radiographs and pictures of ultrasound to identify structures. That's why I found this book in particular very helpful. So when I find an area I'm unfamiliar with, I just look it up in the book. Another good anatomy atlas is an online atlas called IMA iOS eAnatomy. This is essentially an online anatomy app and website. That's a good resource to access when you're on the go. Lastly, if you're looking for an anatomy textbook where you're offered some explanations as well as pictures, I quite like Moore's Essential Clinical Anatomy. I have to say I mainly use this in my undergraduate study, but it's good to dip back into if you're looking for something a bit more detailed than just an atlas. As a warning, definitely don't read it from start to finish because a lot of the topics won't be tested in the exam. For example, they probably won't test you on things like the lymphatic drainage of certain areas. The other great resource is Radiology Cafe's list of normal anatomical variants. Link in the description. It makes sense to go through these and just memorize them. I also have some specific tips for the anatomy exam. Firstly, read the question very carefully because sometimes they're not asking you to identify a structure. They're asking you questions about a structure, such as what runs through it. Secondly, make sure you name the side, so left or right. This is a very easy way to lose a mark, even though you may have named the structure correctly. Sometimes the side is indicated by a mark, such as the marker on plane radiographs, or you might have to work it out by other structures, such as the heart being on the left side. There is a little exception about this, which the RCR mentions in its advice for the anatomy exam, which is that if you don't have a paired structure shown or a marker, then you wouldn't have to name which side the structure is. For example, if they only show one hand without any marker to show if it's left or right, then you don't have to say which side it is. The last specific thing from the RCR guidance is about paediatric anatomy and ossification centres. Essentially, you're meant to use the terms epiphysis and apophysis rather than secondary ossification centre, as that will lose a mark, and they specifically say that in the guidance. Uh, I put a link to that guidance in the description, so make sure you read that through. For more detailed tips on the part one, check out my website, link in the description. Leave any questions in the comments, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.